I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. I'm glad you could join us this week for another netcast, and we're going to be talking about some cool stuff. You know, since I've been posting my videos on YouTube, I have gotten several reactions. <laughs> One was a guy who thought I was a proctologist. Another was someone who said that I was a very funny dude, which I'm sure there are those who would say that. But then there are those who like to just unload on you and tell you to get off the internet and leave them alone. To you I say, just don't watch the videos. What's the deal? <laughs> you know? I mean, come on. If you want to post a video to YouTube, you can too. It's kind of a free country. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, I have those who are fans and those who are not. Yes. But, uh, you know, those who are not, just don't watch. It's simple. You know, your tiny little mind can get that, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's go to the blog, shall we? The blog, of course, being drbill.cc. That's of course, stands for Computer Curmudgeon. CC at the end. Let's see, that would make it not the prefix, but the, I don't know, the extension. <laughs> the web extension address. By the way, I'm going to put a link in the show notes. I do that occasionally. And the link that I'm going to put in the show notes is an explanation of what domain extensions stand for. Because I have found, I was talking about the person earlier with the tiny little mind, I have found that a lot of people don't know what those things stand for. And so, I am going to edumacate you. Yes. And for those of you with the tiny little minds, I did that on purpose. I do that. It's part of the silliness. I'm in a weird mood, as you can tell. Probably I shouldn't have read the YouTube comments before I started. <laughs> anyway, first item <laughs> in the news this week is that IE9 is out. Let the downloading begin. And well, it should. Because Internet Explorer is a necessary evil. Well, less so than it used to be. Back in the day, not that long ago, you had to use Internet Explorer to upgrade, uh, well, not necessarily upgrade, but to patch your operating system by getting security patches from Microsoft by going to update.microsoft.com. If you do that now in Windows 7, it'll tell you, what are you doing here? Just go click on Windows Update. You know, everybody wants to fuss at you. Why can't they just be calm and nice? Anyway, but the reason I like Internet Explorer 9 a little bit is that at least it's now supporting web standards better. Now, I downloaded the real IE9. I had the release candidate. Now, I have downloaded the real thing. I, I'm real now. And it still doesn't support WebM, at least as far as I can tell. Sigh. Hopefully they'll do that in a future minor release of some kind or have some kind of little doohickey that will hook into it that will allow that to happen. I suspect Microsoft is probably not too happy with Google anyway. Google's the one talking WebM these days. Which is why I'm all about the Chrome. I like the Chrome browser. It's fast. It's clean. And it supports HTML5 and WebM in a lovely way, yes. So, 
and WebM is just cool. We'll talk more about that later. Yes, later on. All right, next item. The next item is that the computer virus has turned 40 years old. I am older than computer viruses. That's disconcerting. Because it seems like computer viruses have been around forever. As long as there have been computers. But no. No, they haven't. The very first computer virus, as a matter of fact, was the creeper. Uh -huh. Sounds creepy, doesn't it? But you know what it's from? It's from a reference in a Scooby-Doo cartoon. They were after the creeper in this particular cartoon. Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School. Anyway, the bad guy there was the creeper. And so the creeper virus, when it was released, did things that referred to the creeper. It said, I'm the creeper, catch me if you can. These virus writers, so juvenile, with their tiny little minds. Ah. Anyway, <laughs> so I have a, <laughs> an image on the website, drbill.cc, about the computer viri turning 40, and it's got the funny little creatures that are the representations of viri. By the way, I mentioned in the article that I like to pronounce viruses as viri. It's something I do. Get over it. I'm really in a weird mood because of reading those comments. I shouldn't do that. The Game Master warned me, don't read the comments because the people have tiny little minds that leave comments on YouTube. <sighs> the Game Master, by the way, is my son, Benjamin. Game Master ZX, he has YouTube videos as well. I would encourage you to go check them out because he's getting cool with them and has many things. Matter of fact, he has one on Spider-Man that's quite awesome that he did recently. So go check it out. Those of you that have missed my conversations with the Game Master, perhaps one day I will be able to get him back on so that we can cover certain gamish things. Because he's studying gamishness at his school, the High Point University nearby, near that way, roughly, from where I'm sitting. Like you care. At any rate, he's becoming quite, well, he has always been quite the game expert, but now he's getting all academic and eliminated in it. So, anyway, yes. Um, Next item. Boy, am I just kind of shotgunning all over the place. Anyway, yes, i9 is out. I mentioned that earlier. But Firefox is coming next Tuesday. Firefox, of course, from Mozilla. My former favorite web browser before Chrome. I mean, Chrome. Who doesn't like Chrome? I rode Harleys for a long time, and they're all chromey. Yes, and I like the Chrome. Anyway, Firefox 4 is coming out, and it's supposed to support WebM. It had better. I'm going to get real ticked off with all these people not supporting WebM because I like it. It's much more compact as a format. Anyway, so we'll see. Did you know, by the way, that in the first 24 hours of downloading, IE9 had 2.3 million downloads? 2.3 million in 24 hours. Now, I hope that means that IE6 will be eliminated from the web in its entirety. As a matter of fact, Microsoft has started a, uh, a movement of their own to try to get rid of IE6, which is cool. So all you people with IE6, download IE9. And if you're not on Windows 7 yet, I don't know why you're not, but if you're not, the highest version of Internet Explorer you can get for Windows XP is IE8. So get that at least. Get rid of 6. Ugh. Anyway. So next item. Word is Microsoft, which I abbreviate M dollar. Mm, it's hard to pronounce M dollar because M dollar is not a word. So I shouldn't try. 
Anyway, word is Microsoft is retiring the Zune. The Zune is an MP3 player. Should probably just call it an audio player because it plays Windows Media Files as well, obviously. It's a Microsoft format. Anyway, uh, apparently the fact that everybody has MP3s and audio files on their phones these days. Where's my phone? Why am I always losing my phone anyway? It's over there somewhere. I was going to hold it up as a prop, but I'll hold up the mouse as a prop. No, I won't. Let's leave it alone. Anyway, the point is that if you've got MP3s on your phone, what do you need an MP3 player for? That was my revelation. To which the Game Master rolled his eyes and said, well, duh. <laughs> you know, what can I say? Anyway, so you can put your MP3s on your phone and you can listen to them wherever you are. And you pretty much keep your phone with you, except for me, that keeps laying, laying around somewhere. Probably charging. It's doing something. <sighs> anyway, on my phone, see, me and the Game Master both have the same phone, Droid X. Our phones, I'll put it that way, we can watch videos, we can surf the web, we can play lightsaber. I do that sometimes at work. There's another guy at work has a lightsaber on his phone, and we do that. We have fun, you know? We're just geeks. But anyway, I digress once again. The point is, is that the phone has kind of become the MP3 player, so why buy another device? And But, you know, here's the thing about that. And that is that at least the Zune had gave Apple some competition for the iPod. And so I'll miss it for that reason. Plus, the Zoom Marketplace, where I am listed, by the way, drbill.tv is listed there. Yes. Um, I'll miss that as well. Maybe they'll keep that around. I don't know. Yeah, who knows with Microsoft? They bring things. They drop things. Eh. Okay. Moving on. Next item. Kevin Rose is leaving Dig, or has left Dig, depending on the time-space continuum at the moment. Kevin, of course, was on Tech TV, one of my favorite networks back in the day. Used to be ZDTV way back in the day before the day. There was a day before the day, which makes it the day before yesterday, before that day was. But... Anyway, he was on Tech TV. He was like a co-host dude on The Screensavers with Leo Laporte. I think before Patrick Norton, who was maybe after Patrick. I don't know. It was a long time ago. Point is that Kevin was this guy, you know? Zephyr's just this guy, you know? A reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes, I'm sure you know that, because if you're geeky enough to watch the Dr. Bill show, <laughs> you're geeky enough to get these references that I make randomly. I have been accused quite often of being a random individual. Oh, look, a bird. That kind of thing. <laughs> so, by the way, I like birds. They're pretty, particularly bluebirds. It's spring. See what I mean? Random. Anyway, point is, I had a point in there, and that is that Kevin left the screensavers and Tech TV when it went defunct, which things seem to do occasionally, and he started Dig, D-I-G-G, -G, Dig, which is a news site that I sometimes, well, maybe more often than sometimes frequent, and see all kinds of very strange, odd news things, which are sometimes fun and enjoyable. Anyway, it became a very popular site. And he had a chance at one point to sell it for $200 million, I think, to Google. But it didn't work out. Oh, well. And then they did an upgrade. And when they did the upgrade, they pretty much screwed it up pretty bad. Yes, the users didn't like it. And if you lose your users, 
have to say that very carefully because it's hard to say. If you lose your users, you don't have any presence on the internet anymore. I mean, this very show that you're watching right now is a good example. I took a two-year hiatus. That's a fancy TV term. That means I didn't produce any programs for two years. And all of my users left. They were gone. Probably I have a whole new audience now. What audience there is out there? Hello. Anyway, so tell your friends. Spread the word. Send emails. Help me out. It just goes to show that if you lose you lose users, <laughs> that would be like, if you say it wrong, it would be use losers. <laughs> That's, that would be bad, okay? You're not losers. You're my friends. Speaking of friending, you were saying we weren't speaking of friending, we were speaking of Kevin. What are you talking about? I'm getting there. I'm random. What the, I told you that. Okay. Speaking of whatever it was I was talking about, <laughs> you need to friend me <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> um, what you need to do is this. Go to Facebook. Look up Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon and join that group. I still have only a handful a handful of people there. Come on, folks. You can join the group, and you can get notices of these very netcasts that you're watching right now. You're saying, but if I'm watching the netcast, why do I need to know when they come out? Because that way you'll know that they're out. So, do these things. Subscribe on YouTube. It's Dr. Bill Bailey, D-R-B-I-L-L-B-A-I-L-E-Y, on YouTube. You know, you say youtube.com slash Dr. Bill Bailey. Go there, subscribe. Then go to the blog, drbill.cc, find the newsletter doohickey over on the um, right hand side, fill that out with your email address, hit the button that says subscribe, and subscribe to the newsletter. Do these things, and you will be informed. Otherwise, you'll be misinformed. That would be bad. Okay, Kevin is leaving Dig. You thought I forgot. <laughs> no. Kevin is leaving Dig because Dig is going belly up and he's going like, dude, I'm out of here. Can't blame him. But it, there's also rumored that he has another venture in mind. He's actually had several ventures. Lots of them, actually. Um, so we'll see how all that goes. But, hey. Anyway... Next item. I mentioned last week about the disaster in Japan. Multiple disasters. They had a tsunami. They had earthquakes. They had all kinds of things. They had one big major earthquake. Then they had lots of little follow-up earthquakes that are like tremors after the earthquake. I mean, it's kind of like if the earth shakes, it kind of keeps going. <laughs> anyway, and it's a very serious situation. I don't mean to make light of it at all. Please don't misunderstand that just because I'm a very strange person that I'm not concerned about these things. I am. However, one of the interesting sidebars to that whole situation is that there will be a shortage of parts for various things that people are really interested in right now, like, for instance, the new iPad 2. There may be a shortage of parts due to the fact that most of that stuff, the electronic stuff, is made in Japan. Okay, so people are really kind of concerned about that, particularly the iPad people. So, if you're looking to get doohickeys and it's not there as quickly as you think it should be, it's because of what's going on in Japan, which just goes to show how interconnected we are these days around the world. Yes. Don't! Yes, the Geek Software of the Week. Boy, it won't let me forget it, will it? It's like, you know, I thought you were going to forget before you went off the air. But no, I don't. The Geek Software of the Week, particularly with that drum roll to remind me, is Og Video Converter. 
<laughs> That's a strange one, isn't it? I love Og. Yeah, I've told you that before. I love Og. <laughs> but here's the thing. Boy, this is a lot of technical stuff to squeeze into one little tiny segment, but here it is. I changed as of the last netcast, netcast number 179. By the way, this is 180. <laughs> We're doing a 180. <laughs> yes. Anyway, the netcast, the last netcast 179 was the first netcast that had a format in its video file of M4B rather than MP4. And you say, why are you just rearranging the letters? No, it's a different format. They're very similar, very similar. But the Apple iTunes thing likes the M4B. So does techpodcast.com. So does Blueberry. So does all of the feeds on the Zoom and everything else. Zoom. <laughs> I've got Zoom on the brain now. No, the Roku and the Boxy and all those things prefer the M4V for streaming. So I switched to that on the recommendation of Todd Cochran from Raw Voice and techpodcast.com. So that's all well and good. But I, I also want to support the WebM format. I am very strongly supportive of WebM, and I wanted to have a way to convert M4V files, transcode them to WebM files. And if you have a need to do that, that's where this Geek Software of the Week comes in. And that is the AUG Video Converter. Now, it sounds strange, but WebM is based on AUG technologies, open source technologies. And so, the AUG Video Converter converts M4V files to WebM easily, slowly, but easily. The software is professional M4V to WebM converter. You can customize the video size, frame rate, bit rate with this converter. So the output file size is controllable. Besides WebM, the converter converts M4V files to AUG, AUGM, AUGV, and H.264 that are HTML5 video formats either. That sentence made no sense. Probably I'm reading it entirely wrong. But the point is, it's in the article. Yes. Now, I will say this, it's it's not a freebie. I like freebies. You know I like the free. It's not a freebie, but it's inexpensive. It's like $29.95 or something. But anyway, there's also a free way to do it, which I've already mentioned before, which is Firefog. Firefog. Sounds like a video game villain. But anyway, Firefog's a website. You have to have a little doohickey that you install within Firefox, because it's a Firefox. Firefox extension, and then you hit the website, and you can expand out little windows and type in things to, you know, customize it, and then it will render it. And that takes a long time, too. I don't know why it takes such a long time for these things. But I wanted a way to do it in a standalone fashion, and so I went out and found Og Video Converter, our Geek Software of the Week. Yes. So there you go. These are the items that I covered this week on Dr. Bill the Computer Comanche. Isn't that lovely? And if you are one of those with the tiny little minds, mm, ah, I do not take you seriously, although it does bug me, I must say, a little. It would bug you, too. I mean, I'm just a big fuzzy dude that's friendly and happy. You should like me. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Until next time, the doctor is out of here.